Hello team, this is Real World Audio and I'm continuing. Uh, this is something really basic and I'm making this video for two reasons. One, that I want to have it remembered for myself what I did to this deck, what I have changed, how it was before and what it is after the change and I recommend this for everyone who is working on their own audio gear is that when you are doing it just make a short brief video documentary on what you are doing and you can review it anytime after that and you don't have to wonder about uh, a couple of years later what did you do to that unit what did you change and uh, uh, what's happening so here we go uh, so now let me just take out uh, this part the deck board and just look at the the chassis so here we had the toroid power transformer that's still being cryogenically treated so now let's look at this part where we are getting the power and as you see it has uh, this uh, unit which is the IEC inlet and it is mounted on a small PCB and then that PCB uh, here, that's the uh, leg that goes to the switch. So here is a power switch. And then when it's switched off, then these two are not connected. And when you switch it on, there's electrical connection between those two leads. So now the, the power goes there on this side. Let me see. Uh, we can see it that where is my finger upper side you see that silvery blob that's where the power goes in so that's the input and and that's the switched one so the switch is between those two so when it's off then there's no connection between those two and when it's switched on then these there is no resistance between those two so if you have an ohm meter and you put the two ends of your ohm meter here if it's switched off, then it has infinite resistance. It's switched on, you have zero resistance. And then it goes into this fast connector. So those two top pins are connected to that top uh, uh, eyelet there. And then the bottom two on this connector are connected to here, to the bottom leg on the IAC inlet which is the neutral so that's the neutral and that's the positive that's the hot and that's the ground pin the center is always the ground so this one is always connected to your toroid transformer this is the switched one and that grounds your chassis so let's see you see that's the center pin, this is grounding and it's grounded to your chassis. Now let's have a look at this because this is very common practice on most uh, electronic gear. And you see, you hear that noise and then you can see the movement as well. If I'm moving it, it's not screwed on properly. So that's something that you can check on all your equipment just tighten up that screw because now there is no strong electrical connection between the chassis and your uh, grounding wire and here this series of tabs is where everything uh, connects to so the top part of the chassis the front of the chassis and the board itself is also connected to this tab and and if it's not connecting your chassis properly then you will have some noise pickup through the bottom of your chassis and i mean electromagnetic noise pickup so what will i do to improve that situation before i answer that question there was this paper thingy that was wedged between the circuit board and the power switch and I removed it and I had to remove it to trace the uh, the neutral of the here so the neutral is connected to those two bottom tabs you see it there and we go there and you see that tiny eyelet up there 
so it runs there and that is the super duper close to the hot so basically there's like a few maybe less than two millimeters distance between the neutral and the switched hot this is not the switch i'm sorry this is the unswitched this is the switch so at all times even when your power switch is off even then the these two pins which there is like 120 volts ac difference between these two there is now we can see it you see there so between that and that there is like a millimeter or two difference less than two millimeters and basically they added this paper sheet uh, to make sure that the two do not connect physically but uh, i don't think that's a really good idea so what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove this uh, circuit board but as you see that iac inlet doesn't have the pins the legs here for the hot and the neutral so i'm going to use a different socket that has three legs so you see it has all of those three so i'm going to remove this whole thing here and add this in instead and the wiring will be as following so this one will connect right here to the switch and then this will go right away because this is switched i'm going to bypass all of this junk here and this will go to the toroids trans transformer input right away and and the bottom leg that's the neutron so that will also go to the toroid transformer so i'm going to take an entire pcb out from the signal path and why is it so critical because this deck is extremely sensitive for any change in the power cord so if you try out different power cords with the ps audio dr3 deck it's going to responsive extremely sensitively to power cord changes and and that's true not just for what is connected on this side but it's also true for what is going from here to the power transformer so if you do any upgrades for that then it's going to have just as big effect as you going from a, a simple power cord to a very high grade power cord and once you have a high grade power cord of course that's your next step to upgrade the internal part <sighs> so that's what going to happen and also because i'm having just so much problem with switch mode noise lately during the past couple of months i'm going to add a small capacitor directly on top of these two pins this is just a four nanofarad uh, desealing capacitor it's two kilovolts rated 2000 volts rated and uh, it's the purpose of that for that small capacitance is to short out those uh, few uh, less than one microsecond very high energy peaks that switch mode power supplies generate and throw back into the power and you don't want that to reach your power transformer because that that tiny peak is going to uh, just interact with all the inductance and capacitance and resistance of your power transformer and you're going to get a very nasty signal that's going to your circuit board and also i'm going to add another of these capacitors directly on top of your my uh, power transformer so i have another capacitor sitting here directly by the coil uh, by the primary and also at the secondary as well so i want to first of all shield this unit from whatever comes from the outside world and i also want my power transformer to to shut any kind of resonance that the power transformer itself is generating to feed back to the main line and also to feed it to the deck board so that's some extra precaution that nowadays we have to make partially to shield our system from the noise that we are generating here and also 
to shield this unit from the noise that's entering from our line AC. So thank you everyone for tuning in. I hope this gives everyone some idea how to bypass your unit or, or what to ask from a professional technician, how to do that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't try to do it yourself because you can electrocute yourself. All of these things I am suggesting you are for trained people only. If you are not a licensed electrician, you don't know how to work on these gears, do not just start on my account. Ask for professional help, otherwise you will injure yourself or probably kill yourself. So just remember all of these voltages that come from here are, are deadly and uh, just take care and use sensible precaution and if you are underage then strictly ask your parents for anything that you want to do on any electronic gear you absolutely must not do such things on your own uh, because you might die if you try okay so i'm explicitly forbidding everyone from messing around with such things and if you do it you do it at your explicit responsibility so thank you bye bye